hello guys and welcome back to another video and today we'll be working the january 2021 math paper 2 question 4 so let's go all right so 4a says the function is defined as where f of x is equal to 3 minus 2x and it says the diagram below shows the mapping of the function f determine the value of a so what you're going to do is to use the formula that is given the equation where 3 minus 2x so f of x is equal to 3 minus 2x so before we look at a should we put th those that are given the 0 1 and 2 the x values into our equations will into our equation we'll see that it maps with the corresponding f of x values of 3 1 and negative 1 so if we say th 0 into where x is it will be 2 multiplied by 0 to give us a 0 and 3 minus 0 will leave us with 3 if we put 1 into our x value it is 2 multiply by one to give us two and three minus two will give us one if we put two into our x value it is two multiply by two to give us four and then what we'll have is three minus four to give us a negative one so we see that now under this assumption once we put negative one into our x value then we should get our corresponding f of x value our corresponding y value which would give us the value of a which the question asks us to solve. So it is f of x is equal to three minus two x. We know what x is, which is negative one. So what we'll have is f of x is equal to three minus two multiplied by a negative one. So we'll work that portion of our equation first. So what we'll have is two multiplied by negative one to give us a negative two. So what we'll have is f of x is equal to three minus negative two. And what we know is that when two negative signs are next to each other, a negative multiplied by a negative will always result in a positive sign. So what we'll have is f of x is equal to three plus two, and therefore f of x is equal to five as three plus two is five. So therefore, A, which we're trying to find, is equal to 5. Part 2 now says, determining their simplest form, ex expressions for the inverse of F. So F inverse of X. So what we know is that F of X, as given before on the previous slide, is equal to 3 minus 2x so what we know is that when we're finding the inverse basically we're substituting x for y and y for x and then make y the subject of the formula so but before we do that what we know is that f of x is the same as y so we rewrite our equation to be y is equal to 3 minus 2x and now we're going to interchange the letters so wherever we see x we'll put y and wherever we see y we will put x so what we'll have now when rewriting our equation it will be x is equal to 3 minus 2y and this is how we're now finding the inverse of the function so therefore after we do this what we'll do is to now make y the subject of the formula when we do that, so first we're going to take this negative 2y from the right hand side to the left and take this x from the left hand side to the right. So what we'll have is 2y is equal to 3 minus x. So the 2y here was negative, so when it comes across, it becomes positive. Or we're saying we're adding 2y to both sides of the equation and the x was positive here, so when it comes across, it will be negative. And it is the same as saying we're subtracting x from both sides of the equation. So now we have 2y is equal to 3 minus x. And what we're going to do now is to make y the subject of the formula. So the 2 was multiplying with the y on the right hand side, on the left hand side, sorry. So when it comes across, it will be dividing, or it's the same as saying we're dividing both sides of the equation by 2. So therefore, y is equal to 3 minus x divided 
by 2 and therefore f inverse or inverse of the function f inverse of x is equal to 3 minus x divided by 2 and that is our answer for the inverse of the function. Part B now says it asks us to find the composite of the function, which is f square x. So therefore, what we know is that f square x is the same as saying f, f of x. So we're basically multiplying f of x by itself. So f square x is the same as saying f, f of x. So what we know is that f of x is equal to 3 minus 2x. So when we're doing composite function, what we're saying is that wherever in f of x, we see x, we'll replace it with this f of x. So f of x, wherever in this f of x, we see x, we will replace it with f of x. So therefore, what we'll have is, remember, f of x was 3 minus 2x. So wherever we see x, we'll put f of x and that is our f f of x so therefore it will be 3 minus 2 f of x so now what we can do is wherever we see f of x we can replace it with the actual figures from the equation so therefore what we'll have is 3 minus 2 and the values for f of x which was 3 minus 2x so what we're first going to do is to solve the brackets here. We're going to work out our brackets. So what we'll have is the negative two being multiplied by three and then the negative two being multiplied by a negative two x. So therefore, f, f of x is equal to three minus negative two multiplied by three, which will give us a negative six and a negative two multiplied by two x, which will give us a positive 4x. So f, f of x is equal to 3 minus negative 2 multiplied by 3, which will give us a negative 6, and a negative 2 multiplied by negative 2x, which will give us a positive 4x. As remember, negative multiplied by a negative always results in a positive number. Now we can go ahead and simplify as the question says, give the answers in its simplest form. So what we'll have is three minus six, which will give us a negative three. So therefore f, f of x is equal to negative three plus four x. And we can just rewrite this by having the x figure, the x component first followed by the negative three. So therefore f, f of x is equal to four x minus three. And that is our answer for the composite function of f f of x which is 4 minus 3. Part 3 now says state the value of f, f inverse of negative 2. So it's the same way we just work the one before. So we're having f of x that we see x, we will replace it with f inverse of negative 2. So first we're going to start by working out the f inverse of negative 2. We know previously we saw what the, what the inverse of the function is, which was 3 minus x over 2. So now wherever in this equation that we see x, we replace it with negative 2. So we're working on this portion of the composite function first, the f inverse of negative 2. So we know what the f inverse formula was, which was 3 minus x over 2. So wherever in this function that we see x, we will replace it with negative 2. So therefore, f inverse of negative 2 is equal to 3 minus negative 2 divided by 2. These two negative signs when multiplied by each other will result in a positive sign. So what we'll have is f inverse of negative two is equal to three plus two divided by two. So these two signs, they multiply by each other result in our positive sign here. So we have three plus two divided by two. So what we have now is three plus two will give us five. So therefore f inverse 
of negative 2 is equal to 5 over 2. And this is what we're now going to put into our f of x function. So remember, our f of x was 3 minus 2x. So what we'll have is f, f inverse of negative 2 is equal to 3 minus what we just got for the f inverse of negative 2. So we have an x, we have an f of x, we saw x, we're replacing it with f inverse of negative 2. So x was right here beside the 2, so we're replacing it with f inverse of negative 2. So what we'll have is f f inverse of negative 2, so what we have is 3 minus 2 multiplied by 5 over 2. So what we'll have is 3 minus 5 as 2 into itself goes 1 time, 2 into itself goes 1 time. So what we'll have remaining is 3 minus 5. And when we work that out, 3 minus 5 will leave us with a negative 2. And therefore, f, f inverse of negative 2 is equal to negative 2. And that is or answer. Part B now says, using a ruler, draw the lines x equal to a half, y is equal to x, and x plus five is, x plus y is equal to five on the grid below. So basically we're getting one mark per line. So x is equal to a half. We realize that from this grid on the x-axis, two centimeter is equal to one unit. So that is what is on the x-axis. So therefore it will be right here where x is equal to a half which is indicated by our orange line the next part says y is equal to x what we're going to do is to make x be equal to zero and see what y would be and then make x be equal to six which is the highest point here and to see what would be y equal to so therefore from our table we'll see that when x is zero y is also zero and when x is six y is also six as that is what the formula says, it says y is equal to six. So what we're going to do is to draw a line through our zero point here, when y is zero and x is zero, up to this point. And this line can be extended should the graph be open up more, whether it have all four quadrants, then it will just continue going and going when x is zero, y is also zero. When x is 10, y is 10. When x is 15, y is 15. If x is negative 20, y is negative 20 and on and on. So no matter how big this graph get, whatever the value for x is, y will also be that. And therefore this is our value, which is, this is our line which is represented by the green line on our graph of when y is equal to x. So now we have the other part, which is x plus y is equal to five. So we're going to use our zero values again. So when x is zero, y is equal to five as zero plus five is equal to five. And then we're using when y is zero, what would be the value for x? So when y is zero, x would be five. And these are the two points that we're going to use to plot for this line of x plus y is equal to five. And this is represented by our blue line. And this is where we got our three marks. So part two now says on the grid label as R, the region where X is greater than a half, Y is greater than X and X plus five is less than or equal to five. So X should be greater than or equal to a half. Y is greater than or equal to X and X plus five is less than or equal to five. So what we know that when we are drawing lines on our graph, once it have the greater than or equal to or less than or equal to sign, then our lines will remain as a solid line. If they weren't, if they did not contain the equal to portion, then what we'll have is broken lines to indicate that the solution, the answer where the line is at is not a part of our solution. So for the first one where X is equal to a half, 
So x is greater than or equal to half, so therefore it would contain all possible values. So where x is greater than or equal to half, so from there where x is equal to a half, so everywhere that is currently being colored in red would be where x is greater than a half, where the line is where x is equal to a half. The other part now says where y is greater than or equal to x. So y is greater than or equal to x. That would be everywhere now that we're going to color with the yellow. So that would be every part right here. So everywhere above the green line is where y is greater than x. And now for the other part, it says where x plus y is less than or equal to five. So everywhere where x plus y is less than five. So the blue line would have already indicated where it is equal to five. So now we're looking for when it is less than five. And we're just going to use this green so it will be everywhere below here. So now the part that we're going to label with the green with R is where all three points overlap. And the only place where all three requirements overlap would be right here where they form this basically triangle. And that would be where our labeling for R would be. So therefore it is basically where this enclosed, um, let's say enclosed figure is done. And that would be the area for where we label as R. That is where an overlap takes place between all three requirements would be our labeling for R. And that is the end of our question. So question four and we'll see you in the next video for question five.